Hey guys. So this video is going to be talking about running a campaign. So right now at the store, uh, we're running a campaign in the Jihad era. And I'm the game master of it. And it's been a lot of fun um, putting it together. Uh, we, um, we use the Total Chaos rules, um, so the War Chest Point system. And that's been running very smoothly for us. So, uh, as GM myself, uh, like my background is as former active duty marine, so I have a kind of firm resolve, no retreat mindset. So, as far as the AR, I, I like to refer to my role as the artificial intelligence. Um, it's a harder difficulty setting, really. If you're playing a video game, it'd be a harder difficulty setting. So, you really have to crush, like, really beat into the opponent. Um, the artificial intelligence to get them to fall back or retreat or anything like that. So what I do is I, I, I spread out targets. Like I'm not I'm not playing to crush the player force. Like I'll spread out targets. I try to go after multiple people. Um, if someone's going after an objective, then more me then more units will pursue them, of course, uh, because it's objective. I mean, you can't can't just let someone walk up, get the objective, walk off the board. So. So that's that's kind of how I, you know, I, I try to try to balance it so I'm not like just destroying the player force. And something else I also implement is surprises. What I do is I write up a little a little fictional write up, then I give out the objectives, the um, the mission, and then in within that mission, I'll say things such as uh, there's potential static defenses, there may be scouts, and so on and so forth. And so there, there may be things out there for them to watch out for. So, and I like to like to surprise surprise the players. In the last game, there was a building, there was a heavy fire base, and the players remembered about the potential for scout force, or for a scouting unit or two, and they forgot about the possibility of static defenses. So. Once they engaged in the base, a turret spun up and lit a couple mechs up. It completely tore into one mech, I mean, hitting the gyro engine, everything. It was a huge surprise. So, that, I, I try to give hints, but not too much. And then, I also, I also like to go through the source books, like 3070, and the future ones, when those, when those years roll around. And I look at the missions. I kind of see how the Fortress Point cost is in those missions, kind of make it comparable, and then make the objectives worth you know, the amount of points that, that are similar. Give out, and I also create my objectives. So, like, there was a couple, um, there, was one, there was one mission where they're trying to cripple, uh, cripple a couple vehicles, and I created one objective, and he got away, and so that was minus a few points. So, I try to create the objectives, try to give them fun names. There was one pilot uh, that was wreaking havoc in two missions ago. And so one of the objectives in this last mission was goss slugs and bad blood. And so what that means is cripple or destroy the commander's enforcer. It was the enforcer variant, I think it's Daniel, with the goss rifle. So it kind of made, made sense, you know, slinging goss rifles all over the place. You know, not going to make people happy. And so, the so when it comes to mission creation, I also look at the MechWarrior uh, computer games, the MechWarrior Four computer games, and I actually I've actually taken a mission or two out of those and tried to put it on the board, and so that's why that's what I'm going to do in the future as well. So there's a couple of, there's a couple of missions that uh, I already have in the works, and plus I'll play the MechWarrior Four games, so I'll, I'm sure I'll come up with more stuff in the future. So for the scope of the campaign, we're basically, as far as as far as I would like to do, uh, I, I would be more than willing to run it from. Right now, we just finished thirty sixty eight, and we're in thirty sixty nine. I would like to run it all the way up to thirty one fifty. So I mean, there, there's going to be a few few gaps in years and all that stuff, but I have all the jihad source books. I have a few of the uh, the planetary source uh, books that get, get released every now and then. And I also have the Wars of the Republic era. So there's a few options there. Then 
I'm also going to be, uh, well, I'm potentially going to maybe purchase the industrial mechs uh, because of Grey Monday. So when that rolled around and blockout happened, there was the demobilization slash mothballing all these mechs in the houses and clans. And so, you know, you, I, may, I may have the industrial mechs or I may skip that. It just depends on, you know, what I'm looking at buying at the time. And then I'm also in this campaign, I because I went on Sarna and I've read a little bit about the Banson Corporation, Banson Universal Unlimited, or Unlimited Universal, one, one way or the other. And there's not really much of a backstory. So what I've done is the corporation that the player force is currently working for is Banson, uh, is the Banson Corporation. Know, way back when they're just exploring, when they're exploring the periphery and stuff like that, just kind of um, creating the fiction, you know, um, forging the narrative as one player um, reference reference that type of stuff. So for a number of players, this campaign has actually really grown in size, and we have currently a total of eleven players that are in the campaign. Uh, so there's myself. We got eleven players that are in the campaign, and then we have more players that haven't joined yet um, or will be or will be running the opposing the opposing force with me so right now it's pirates later on it'll be word of blake and at some point clan so it just depends on where or who the uh, who the mercenary force wants to work for so for this campaign i started it off in 3068 so we all we all know that the word of blake just destroys outreach. Um, yeah, the mercenaries turning on each other and all this. And so what the player force is, is a coalition of, of small-time merc units that have just been shattered. And so what they did was they came together and they were left, they were still on the planet when the Wolf's Dragoons were taken off the planet by Wolf in Exile and the Kellyhounds. And so when well, I'm not sure if the Kellons were in the first one, but I, I included them because basically they took the Wolf's Dragoons to Ark Royal, and then I, in my own little forge in the narrative, I brought them back for a second pickup run while the player force was running a guerrilla campaign against Word of Blake. It was basically a running retreat guerrilla uh, battle. So we, that ended with a huge climatic battle with three drop ships. There was 60,000 battle value on the field. It was a massive game. It took a grand total of about 12 hours. Uh, we had to split it up into three parts. And so basically they got off there. They went to uh, Ark Royal and then they had three contracts. There was to go help the Lyrans fight the Free World League. There was to go deal with Clanners and then there was to work for the Corporation. So now they're working for the Corporation and they are currently trying to salvage old Star League Defense Force uh, base and tech and all that stuff in the periphery. And so the way it started is each player got to pick a light and a medium mech built on or, or in or before 3068. Then they also are getting to build their own random assignment table or RAT if I abbreviate it later on. And they would, they get to pick, they get to pick whatever mech they want. Uh, to be on that table because look, just myself looking at the random assignment tables, I half of the mechs at least I wouldn't I would never field myself. And yeah, that that's that's what's been produced for the for by the game developers. But you know, it's our game. We're gonna make it our way. And so they have their own rats. They'll get to roll off of. And so they were so there's there's not too much clan tech. So in their light and medium rats, they get two clan mechs that they could potentially win or buy at some point. And then they also, in the heavy rat, have one one clan heavy. They don't have any clan assaults available. So at some point when, when they're dealing with the clans, if they salvage an assault mech, then they may be able to get that. So, as I mentioned, I would love to run this campaign all the way up to the current era. And so, just, in, just uh, a few things that will be happening is I want to involve the Kittery Resistance. We're going to see Devil and Stone and Stone's Lament. We're going to see the uh, we're going to see some freeing of some of the capital worlds and eventually Terra. Then the Wars of Republic era. We can run through some of that. Grey Monday will happen. 
and like I mentioned, may or may not have the industrial mechs. And then the other thing I want to mention is tactical operations. This book is awesome. There's all sorts of crazy stuff to involve. Like right now, Ultra Heavy Woods is in every mission. And two missions ago, I used, or two missions of the last mission I used, I used geysers as well. So that was a neat little thing. It didn't, didn't destroy anything, but it was, it was just something cool to have happen on the board. And there was one mission, uh, you know, a couple months ago where I had, it was a, a heavy storm and rapids. So first half, and I was using the lakes and rivers um, hex board as well as putting rivers everywhere. And so the first, like the first half of the game, no one fell. People were crossing rivers. It was fine with all that. They finally they get the objective, and then they're trying to get the objective off the board. And the very last river they have to cross before they get off the board, mechs were falling, coring themselves out. It was a disaster. It was I mean, it, it went absolutely haywire. So the rules and tactical operations, as long as there's not too many of them, can be can be pretty fun and chaotic. So as far as numbers go. The war chest point system is really good. It, it really simplified everything. Uh, trying to use the optional rules, um, like tech level costs, C bills, all that stuff, that would just be two of the top. Especially if I'm trying to keep a track of 11 players. Um, and it's, yeah, that's that would be too much. So one thing that it looks like is, it looks like right off the bat, that it just seems like there's continuously low funds, that you will go bankrupt. And you may potentially do that. But I've also noticed that it keeps players from having the best pilots ever. Because if the rate was increased anymore, players would be able to level up their pilots and they would be they would be insane pilots. Like within within a couple months you would have everyone running zero zero pilots. And then then that would get boring for the game master, and I'm sure some of the players would get bored with that. So it's so having the di the dice rolls and all that stuff with you know four five pilots three four pilots four four pilots things like that you know it adds it adds some randomness to the game it's not always hitting always killing and so on and so forth yeah the zero zero pilots make the mechs super expensive but then you'd have less mechs on the field less people I mean at some point you know if, if a couple of people have assault mechs then they can't run anything or then not all the players would be able to run stuff so. I, I like the way that it's it's staked because you convert 100 war chest points to 1,000 support points every month. And going off of that is if they accomplish certain objectives or if they've done something to please their employer, um, anything like that, If maybe if they're getting hooked up by another mercenary unit, then they may get a bonus to that conversion. So instead of 1,000, they get 1,250. So that, that that's neat ways to play with it. Um, so that way they aren't broke the entire time. They can still do stuff. They can buy new mechs and things like that. And so now that, now that I've had a chance to work with it for a few missions, everything's starting to click. I have a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet and Microsoft Word document and everything is lined up as the two companies because I've had to split because I've had to split, so Alpha Company is six players, Bravo Company is five players. They, they're going to be playing every other week, and the off week, they're you know it's a pickup game for those players. And so, the Excel document, the Word document, help me keep everything in order. I can write what percent damage a mech has, fill in all the information, post that to the Facebook page, and then the players can all read through it. And they can either make decisions, or in in, my, in our case, I've actually designated a tech guy because sometimes there aren't very many responses. So he just comes in and says, "Yeah, repair everything, uh, heal all the pilots, re um, reload all the ammo." And so I just figure those numbers out. Boom, it's done. And since the ammo doesn't cost all that much, and healing pilots isn't too crazy, it's it's you know a fairly good system. So one more point on the uh, players is you really you, you can't have too many people around the table. Like before, I just split like I just split the campaign up over this last week, and I mean we were having seven eight players around the table, and then it was me and then maybe someone helping me run the uh, opposing forces. It was just too many players. <laughs> like people were sitting around, 
not doing anything for uh, for you know a few minutes, you know, for like 10, 15 minutes at a time. So I mean, I can definitely see how that would get boring for boring for someone. Um, the other thing is is to go with uh, my game mastering is a lot of t uh, to go with the AI type thing is a lot of times I just move mechs up real quick. And so that's another way to accelerate the game, is I don't have any personal stake in the mechs, in the mechs tanks, all that stuff surviving. I mean, yes, they're going to be a little tough, but, you know, I, I just advance them, advance them, advance them. Give, give them the feel of, you know, an artificial intelligence. It's not, it's not someone who's planning out every single tactical move. So then it's, then it, then it's not so serious and keeps the game moving. If, I, if I'm only spending five seconds moving moving my unit or two, then that gives the other players a chance to get, get back to their moves. And it helps accelerate the game. So the final topic is learning. I'm definitely learning a lot by what happens. Now there are RPG elements to it. You know, players can, players can ask stuff. Players can uh, find out about stuff. You know, if... You know, my group, my the group I'm with hasn't really, hasn't really gotten that in depth yet. But like one player, uh, I was running a in this last mission, I was running a pirate uh, that had some clan tech on it, and so I didn't tell them about that. That was one of the surprises. So basically, it was a commando. It was a commando with some medium lasers and street SRMs, and so basically, it shot someone with medium laser, did seven damage. And no one questioned it. And then one player off to my right says, Hey, I did seven damage? And I'm like, Yeah. And then he, he realized that's clan tech. And so then he started telling the rest of the guys, Hey, we, we might want to kill that thing. We'll get some clan lasers. And so that, that so he's, he's getting a little bit of a bonus for that. And so when, when players recognize stuff like that, you know, they're doing the RPG stuff, they're going to they're gonna get little bonuses here and there. Uh, in the big mission with the 60,000 60, battle value, uh, a couple players did some pretty crazy stuff. Um, the land, or the uh, company commander, his mech basically stood toe to toe with an assault lance um, for for a minute, and then another player stood toe to toe with the with the uh, Word of Blake commander, and he survived. So <laughs> he got some uh, he got a piloting skill. He got an extra piloting skill level. So instead of being a four five, he's down to or Instead of being a 4-4, four, he's four, down to a 4-3. So, because basically, stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with a mad cat. And his, his piloting skill is going to be a little bit better because now he's kind of, you know, more fearless, more skilled. He's, he's, he stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with a clan heavy. So, pilot's better. Then another pilot, he re after the company commander actually wound up getting killed, or not killed, but his mech wound up being killed because a nuclear explosion went off to the north, and the shockwave went through and knocked his mech over, and it wound up destroying the gyro. So another player rushed by, grabbed him, and took him to a dropship. So that player also got a bonus as well. So that I like the RPG element stuff. So when I set up the board, I also learned my lesson about this: is not making objectives too easy to get. I set up using the mountains and canyons map with all the ravines and the standard. Uh, intro box maps. Uh, there's four maps. And I accidentally left a straight path from the, deploy from the uh, deployment area of the player force to their edge they needed to get to. So I realized this and I basically tried to rush a light ray and a couple other mechs over there to try to slow them down <laughs> because basically all I had to do was get in a convoy and drive off the map. You know, so, so I definitely have to look for look for that from their perspective and see, hey, how can they how can they get there and I don't want it to be too hard, but I don't want it to be too easy. I want them to have, want them to, have to go an entire uh, around an entire mountain range, but I want them to have a rough path, rough path to get there. So another another uh, situation that just came up is it was four hex boards and just imagine them in front of you, four hex boards uh, in, a, in a giant square. And uh, I was defending, and my pirate force was defending a base in the bottom left hex board. That's where they all deployed at, uh, barring some scout scout units that were deployed in the top right hex board, because that was the random die. That was a random die roll. I had one of the players roll, 
And so a strategy was devised where half of the force, well not, I don't know if it was half the force battle value wise, but basically the, the heavier mediums and the two new heavy mechs they just got came from the north and the lights and the light mediums didn't enter the board until like turn three. So basically what happened is the, the mediums and the heavies advanced and I was able to concentrate all my fire on those mechs. So in the Battletech universe, usually the guy with the heaviest mech is going to be higher rank. They're, they just got two brand new heavy mechs too. So there's an exterminator out there in an Orion. And I was running an enforcer, that, that clan tech uh, commando, and eight vehicles. Uh, two Myrmidons, two Bulldogs, uh, two Striker light tanks, and uh, two Vedettes with the scout units hidden out in some woods. Um, and so they, they were just hidden units way out. They weren't even affecting where everyone was coming in. So basically, the Enforcer being the commando, or I mean being the, uh, being the commander that was also the Goss Slug uh, objective guy, he jumps out there, he put a Goss Slug straight through the Orion's back. Like, because, because these were the slower mechs, they weren't able to deal with such fast-moving light, light vehicles, medium vehicles, and a tough medium mech like that. A 585 movement, that thing goes wherever it wants. So, the Orion almost got taken out immediately. And then, three, you know, three turns in, the other light mechs come in from the, uh, from the east. And they're only halfway in. So... At this point in time, then the two vedettes roll in from the scouting from the scouting party, and they start helping out as we just try to create a firing line on the base, just to try to hold back, because I've also got that heavy fire base there. So we pull back, we're, try, we're trying to create a firing line, the light mechs finally swarm into the base, they kill off a tank or two, um, two tanks retreat, and then from there, the turret spins up, tears into a light mech, because up until this point, there was just no way that thing was going to hit anything. I mean, the modifiers were too high, the distance was too far, and I just wanted it to be another surprise. It was static defenses, so they jumped in, they got to go, uh, the turret went up, and lit someone up. Another player uh, didn't receive that information in time, and his, his, his exterminator moved up, and the turret spun around, torn in that thing and wound up doing a gyro and an engine hit. It was, it was, it was, it was nasty. It only fired two turns, but it was totally nasty. And so basically in future missions, I need to make it so that, I need to make, make one of the standard, standard mission options is everyone comes on turn one. All, all units play turn one. Hidden, whatever. And so, because you, you have you have the whole board. I mean, you know, each hex is supposed to be thirty meters, so you have you have control of three hex boards that you come in. And I was expecting everyone to come in because because if they had everyone, I would have completely overwhelmed the pirate force. But the pirate force was only fighting a few mechs at once, so the resolve was a little bit better. And the last mission didn't go too well for the player force, so they had higher higher resolve. So basically, all all units need to come in on the first turn, so that way. If too much damage starts happening to someone, they aren't getting um, they aren't getting the short end of the, the, the short stick, waiting for everyone else to make it in. You have these two giant, you have all these giant uh, giant areas that they could hang out in, wait, 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 sink the initiative even, and they you know and they kind of came in late and risked the two command two of the command backs. so. That was uh, that was another lesson, a little little drawn out, but I just wanted to give the full explanation of what I learned from that. And so, yeah, I mean, other than that, that's just a detailed explanation of the campaign I'm running, and I'm really enjoying it. I think it's really cool. Uh, right now, we're using Max and vehicles, and in the future, I plan on uh, bringing in aerospace and infantry. We, we just got started with vehicles, and we, we aren't 100% savvy on that one yet. And when, we, when we're going to bring in aerospace and infantry, I'm going to be running pickup games so we can learn specifically how all those work once I have all the rules figured out. Um, because we've been playing the store for two years since it opened, and 
all we've used has been mechs and occasional vehicles. So that's, and as far as I know, I think I may be one of the only people that it's even that's purchased aerospace and battle armor. I think another player or two have, but um, yeah, I'll be introducing those at some point. And really, that's that's the full full detail of the campaign right now. And I'm really enjoying running it and keeping it going. So thanks for listening.